we're talking about Starlink. We're talking about Blue Origin. We can sort of tie Project Kuiper into that. How would you differentiate ASTS from the likes of a Starlink or a Project Kuiper? Yeah, I mean the difference between what Starlink. So, so there's there's a. I guess we have to separate the market in two areas. One is fixed wireless. And that's what Starlink's core business is today. And that's what Kuiper is pursuing, which is delivering broadband to a fixed terminal, right? So that requires that you have a dish that's either on a roof or, um, you know, you carry around a Starlink mini, which is still a pretty, maybe it's the size of a notebook computer. You need to have a pretty decent amount of power connected to that. Um, but that's, that's intended to provide wireless internet to your home. Right, and so whether that that could compete with cable with with fiber, um, but that's that's the key market that Starlink is focused on today. Um, the other market is called direct to device, um, and in particular, what Starlink direct to sell and what AST Space Mobile are doing is that they are trying to provide you with broadband service directly to your unmodified mobile phone. Right, and so that is in in AST in Starlink's case um, when you move out of coverage from a terrestrial tower, uh, you will, you know, depending on the architecture, you will either get picked up and it will automatically switch you over to that network, which would be ASD Space Mobile or, um, you know, or it could be, I guess, a roaming network like, like Starlink. Um, and they will provide you with data connectivity, which Starlink today for direct to sell offers, you know, sporadic text messaging, but eventually they want to get to the point where they can offer data uh in voice and for ac space mobile from day one once they do deploy the service they're hoping to provide broadband broadband meaning probably something on the order of call it 10 to 30 megabits per second um per user and then depending on how many users are within a cell um that could go up or could go down um once the network is densified and you know you have multiple satellites overhead they hope to get um those speeds up to 750 megabits per second within a cell and that cell means like you know, call it a 24 kilometer radius uh, area where multiple users will save that or share that that amount of capacity. Um, but this is not a broadband replacement. This is to complement that, uh, as Stock Meetup said. The other thing I would say, though, is that the company, outside of using the cellular spectrum of partners, um, they did sign this transaction to um, basically have 80-year uh, usage rights for Legato, which has 40 to 45 megahertz of spectrum uh, that covers the United States and also Canada. And so by utilizing that spectrum, they're actually going to provide, be able to provide uh, additional broadband capacity in areas where there is no coverage and in areas where there is coverage. And so if you can imagine, um, ASTC Mobile will, like if at a football game, if at and and Verizon networks are inundated and you're not getting good coverage, you can actually connect to AST Space Mobile Legato service through your carrier at and Verizon and get additional broadband service um, and 45 megahertz is actually pretty that's a pretty needy amount of spectrum that's by the way not being used today um, as, as folks may or may not know Legato is currently going through a bankruptcy and, and part of the exit plan is to work with AST Space Mobile which is why the company was able to um, set up the economics very attractively uh, in order to utilize that spectrum um, but yeah the, the the when people who don't know AC Space Mobile say, oh, you know, Starlink's going to crush them and, um, you know, it's a competing service. Um, it's not. Starlink's core business is not competing with AC Space Mobile. Their core business is actually competing with, um, you know, the cable guys and also the wireless carriers too, which is partially why, for example, um, from a business model perspective, um, Starlink has this kind of weird, weird place where I think a lot of MNOs like Verizon ATT, they don't trust Starlink because Starlink, um, that that core business of fixed wireless competes with, for example, the 5G home internet business that AT&T and Verizon have, right? And also their fiber businesses. And so over the long run, um, it is a strategic question for T-Mobile because Starlink ultimately, I think, is going to pursue T-Mobile's uh, customers and try to take them for uh, their, their core business. And then if they do indeed launch a competitive uh, wireless business, for example, working with EchoStar, um, you know, that's going to put T-Mobile in a really, really weird place. And so, um, so yeah, it's an interesting time to, um, be invested in this area. And I think, I think most importantly, like people should understand that just like the, the cell tower business, I think there's going to be 
two to three winners in this area. And uh, it's, you know, the economics are supportive of a duopoly or an oligopoly, and, and there's not going to be just one winner or it's unlikely. And so, um, but as we all will learn in economics, um, it's good to be part of an oligopoly or duopoly. And so I think ultimately, you know, Starlink will fix some of their technological issues, but they still will have some of the business model, um, you know, conflicts with the MNOs, which is why, you know, today, I think Starlink has signed nine MNOs globally. Many of those are really small ones, whereas AST has signed, you know, 53 MNOs globally, which represent 3.2 billion subscribers. You know, Starlink, I think that the, their MNOs represent somewhere around 250 million subscribers. And so there's a big difference there.